I definitely think that the digital media provides a different way of looking at the content. The thing that I loved the most about the Puzzle Maker, and my algebra students especially just loved, was we were talking about parabolas and we were talking about vertical motion, and then we built it and they got to go in the game and experience it. Because you talk about, oh, we're throwing the ball or we're bouncing off the thing. Well, you go into the Puzzle Maker, you jump off the aerial faith plate, and it was neat for them to actually experience how that changes the motion virtually. Portal 2 is basically a game based on a really simple premise. It's this this idea that you can do this impossible thing in our world, which is open a, a hole in space in one place and another, and if I go in one hole, I'll come out the other one. That world fit really well into a space where you could actually have an editor and make your own puzzles so that you know you weren't just being challenged by what we could create, you could actually create your own challenges and you could share them with friends. So the Puzzle Maker is really all about that, giving people that chance to put on the hat of a designer, sit down and try their hand at what they can come up with. I think that what makes it an authentic experience is that it's really open. We didn't really frame the problem other than giving, giving you a set of rules uh, for how these items interact. It really is kind of an open play space. I think the best thing about working with Portal 2 is that you can just do what you want and the community test chambers are really awesome because it's just your design that you can play instead of playing the levels that are there for you. We kind of sense that people are really interested in and have started talking about puzzle craft itself. We've kind of been thinking about features that can kind of help people learn from each other and to take the process we go through of uh, creating something, play testing it, iterating on it, uh, on that, and then building that into the game itself. So that process becomes a fun, natural extension of uh, learning how to create puzzles. If we think about what worked with the Puzzle Maker and what didn't, I think what felt like we got right was the kind of lowering that bar to entry for people. A week after we released it, we had like 120,000 submissions, which is well and above anything we would have expected. And so I think it was exciting not, to, not just to see that many people making maps, but that many people sharing their maps, because I think making a map is one thing, but actually putting it out there for everybody else is another. When you are able to, within seconds, transfer from building the puzzle with the different assets in the palette to actually playing the level you just created, you are in the video game playing it, that is an unbelievable sense of accomplishment for a young person. The puzzle maker has a threshold that's so low for someone to just try to put in some effort that what comes out of it feels really good. Over time, I think my concept of where games provide value has kind of shifted. And now I kind of think of it more as um, instilling a useful pattern of learning. So rather than uh, presenting the information and then challenging and then testing, it's, I think it's more interesting to present a place where kids can practice kind of the love of learning, kind of show them how once they've kind of attained agency in that skill set. They can then create and share and kind of loop back in a way that's kind of relevant to their peers. Learning is enhanced when students are engaged. The kids that are engaged come at it from a different perspective with a different excitement and I think a different type of retention and ability to apply it.